Hello everyone, this is Deborah. I am walking Abby. As many of you know, um, Molly and Kira cannot take walks anymore at uh, the length that Abby does. Kira is 18 years old and Molly is 16. And they have lived a very long, healthy life. And even now they are at home resting. Um, I just want to share what's been going on the last few days. Um, I have been experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit on a deeper level in that, for instance, I went before him um, I bought a new shofar because one of my friends wanted a shofar, and so I gave her the one that I had because it was it was always too big for me. It was long, you know, and I bought a, a shorter one. And when I went before the Lord the other night and I blew into this shofar, I could tell that he was communicating through this shofar. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Um, I mean, I know that shofars can, you know, call to action and things like that, but it, I was blowing it for quite a while, and I could tell that there was some type of a language that was being exhibited through the shofar, which was pretty amazing to me. And then um, last night, early in the morning, I guess it was more early in the morning, I went before the Lord to, to spend time with him. And those of you who have watched my channel um, know that I have shared that Father told me himself that I had the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now he told me this years ago, I had never heard of anybody else talking about a human being could have the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. We know that Jesus does that. And if Jesus dwells in us, why would that be hard to believe? Because I have had scoffers and there was a particular time I was going through something difficult and I was discouraged and stuff. And I had asked the Lord if I could go to this one church that had a prophetic um, team. Um, I wasn't a member. I had gone with a friend of mine a couple times. But um, I really needed some fellowship. And I asked the Father if it was okay if I could go to that church because he really pulled me out of church. And um, so I, he let me go, and I went that morning. And uh, after the service, I went up for prayer, and this woman who I had never seen before, she had never seen me, she began to speak for the Lord to me. And the first thing she said was, you have the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. So the Lord was using it to confirm it for me because I was in such a place of, you know, despondency and just, you know, waiting so long for some of the promises that Father has given me. So um, so when she said that, I, I let out a roar and I fell to the floor under the power of the Holy Spirit. And, of course, as I was falling down, I could I saw all these people like turned looking at me with these big eyes, you know, they didn't know what was going on. Um, and he told me a few other things through her that he confirmed again the things that he had told me that I am really hesitant to even share because, <laughs> you know, they're just, I mean, they're, they're a little hard for me to, to believe. I, I believe it because I have to believe it because he's proven it to me over and over um, but anyway, anyway, let's um, move forward. So this shofar, it was pretty neat. Um, and the night before was it wasn't as it wasn't as um, in depth as it was 
last night. Uh, but I knew that, you know, when, as I was blowing the shofar, again, I knew the, the Holy Spirit was involved. And I spoke, I sent a text to a friend of mine, and she said she heard a few shofars that night. So if you guys are hearing shofars, it could very well be people who are are called to do that. It's a call to war. Now I'm here I'm feeling that right now from the Holy Spirit. Um he kind of it's kind of like he I I can't describe it. I just know it's his presence. He's confirming that. Um so I, now I've lost my thought, but um, what was I, what was I going to share? <laughs> you see, this is what happens ever since I had COVID. Um, but I know that our father is um, some of my memories coming back, which I'm really in, in, um, encouraged about. Um, so I honestly do believe that we will be empowered soon. I don't know, you know, I watch, uh, there's a woman on YouTube, her name is Celestial, probably a lot of you watch her her channel, but, you know, she says that there's not a rapture, but there's so many people who say there is one, It, you know, it makes it difficult, um, so I just have to go by what our father told me, now, he has never used the word rapture, and when he first began to teach me himself he showed me three different gatherings I would call them gatherings because what it was and they were three different locations too um the one the one was really cool it was almost like it reminded me of a mall I used to go to you know a big two-story mall you know these super malls and everybody was coming in and they they already had like baggage with them and we were all excited and greeting each other like we'd known each other before. And and we knew that we were all gathering together and we were going to be sent out. And the one woman who was taking names, um, I actually used to uh, see her. She, she responded to my channel. I knew, you know, who she was and stuff. And I saw her on a few different other channels. So she was kind of like rounding everybody up, you know, keeping track of who where everybody you know was and um then another another gathering that I had it was like we were in an auditorium in these benches you know when you go to high school and you go to the auditorium and you push you know you pull a seat down and you can sit on the seat and then it'll flip back up when you stand up that's we were in seats like that and we were waiting again we were all gathering and it was pretty cool because the woman who was next to me, right now her name escapes me, but she has, she had a channel. I don't know if she still has one, but she had a channel for years. Um, what in the world was her name? She was sitting next to me, and believe it or not, she confirmed in that dream that she had relatives that lived in Arkansas. And my grandparents were born and raised in Arkansas, and somehow... I don't remember how the Lord did it, but he confirmed that this was from him because of her sharing that she had relatives that came from Arkansas. I don't know how it came together, but it was really pretty cool how he does that. You know, he gives you these little little nuggets, and you know it's got to be him because it would be impossible for the, these little little tidbits you know to 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 be similar and stuff so it was pretty cool now i've totally lost what i was going to say in the beginning but i think um i just want to touch base and and let you know that i really do believe something is coming soon i think we can all feel it um i also want to remind everybody that I don't believe Donald Trump is who he's proclaiming to be. When I wanted to vote for Donald Trump, the first thing God told me was King Saul. Now we know how angry he was when the Israelites wanted King Saul to be their king because our father, Jesus Christ, 
his son is our king, right? And we're supposed to trust in him and not look to man for our for our deliverance. So I was going to vote for him because I didn't want um, I didn't want Hillary. That was for sure. So I didn't vote because he said King Saul, and I knew not to do that because I didn't want to disappoint him. And after he and then when he quoted the snake the snake poem. I knew he was referring to himself. I just knew it. The Holy Spirit let me know that he was quoting that snake poem because he was referring to himself. And, but as it, as time went on, I just kept saying, gosh, he seems so sincere. You know, he really wants to make America great again. And, but then the Lord gave me two dreams close together that he he was trying to seduce me in these dreams. You know, he would come and he would make like a pass at me and I would tell him to leave me alone. That was two times. And then the third time, I'm going to share this because it was so detailed that I know that it was from our Lord. I was standing in the basement of a big building. You know how they have those um, elevators down in the basements of these big, huge you know, high rises. And I was standing at the elevator, waiting for the elevator to go up. And what happened was the beast, the black car from the presidential limousine there, pulled up and Donald Trump, or no, wait a minute, Donald Trump walked up to me. Sorry, I'm losing my, my thoughts here. Donald Trump came over to me again and tried to seduce me. And I said to him, Go back home to your wife. I don't want anything to do with you. Something like that. And as I was saying it, here came the car, the beast, the black beast that the president rides around in, pulls up to, to where we were standing, stops, and Melania came out of the shadows. She had been listening to this, which tells me that Melania is in on this inside... Uh, plan and the door the back door of the beast opened up and she climbed in and Donald Trump climbed in be beside her the door closed and it drove away I did not make that up I did not make that up I you know I look at Donald Trump I want him to be sincere I want him to be. I, it, it's confusing to me, but I have to listen to what God showed me because the, the very last time he had to convince me, it was again like a month or so later, and I was just having a hard time with this because everybody kept saying Donald Trump was, you know, going to make things better and, and all this stuff. And I just, you know, I want that. I would love that. But so... I guess I was having doubts. I wasn't consciously thinking about it, but I was sleeping one night and I had this vulgar vision. It was so vivid and so vulgar. It was Donald Trump and Barack Obama and they were kissing each other passionately on the lips in the White House. It was so disgusting I fell out of bed, repenting and crying for the last time that I doubt that for me to doubt that our father was telling me that we cannot trust our eyes. Remember the Bible says that in the last days there'll be a deception, that even the very elect will be deceived if possible. Well, if you're part of the elect, it's impossible because like me, our father is going to show you what the truth is. If you want to know the truth, you can't, you know, you can't love a man so much that you're not going to listen to what God is trying to tell you. So please keep that in mind. I really wasn't expecting to share this, but there it is. So, um, Sorry if I'm rambling, but, you know, you have your choice. You can turn me off. That's the good thing about videos, right? All right, you guys. Um, I really hope to see you soon. I love you. Shalom.